I just want to make a short video specifically to those of you who are either teaching synthesis using Bitwig Studio as your main tool, or for those of you who followed along with my course at the very beginning, before there was even an oscilloscope built into Bitwig and when the Smexoscope wouldn't work. Well, I did just find out, and this may have happened a long time ago, but the Smexoscope was updated to 64-bit, so you can now bring it inside of Bitwig Studio and use it as an alternative if you don't want to use the built-in oscilloscope. Now, the built-in oscilloscope does work really well, but if you have a small screen like I do and you have like the inspector panel open for whatever reason, you'll find that you kind of run out of that screen real estate, and that's really on me. That's not on the developers, but it's just an issue, and it's sometimes hard hard to track what's going on left to right. Let's imagine we had a bunch of effects in here. Like, how are we going to be able to manage all of that? So either A, it would be nice if Bitwig, maybe with the future release, allowed you to pop out the oscilloscope. And I'm sure at some point they'll probably add a spectrum analyzer, something that you could actually pop out and see up in the top, especially when you're working with like synthesis and doing sound design stuff in the bottom using their built-in instruments. Or you can use the Smexoscope if you want to download that. And I always find that having a setup like this, where you have a spectrum analyzer, you have your oscilloscope, and then in this case with Bitwig, what's great is that you can work with the instrument down below. It's a really great sort of visual one, two, three, if you're trying to teach synthesis or even just kind of learn about it yourself. Um, so we can see here if I have like, you know, just more or less a sine wave going in. It actually generates a little bit something closer to a triangle wave. Uh, you, you can see the sort of difference in the display. And I do sometimes have this issue with the Bitwig scope where you have to hit kind of the right key sometimes to generate you a, like a better looking sine wave like we have here, depending on what I hit. Sometimes it starts to overlap. Um, and that can be kind of a pain in the butt. So it just depends on the situation. You can obviously kind of try to fine tune the scale to, to get it just right. But for now, let's just get rid of the oscilloscope since we know that works and uh, show you sort of what I like to do here. If I was teaching synthesis to somebody, I would have my spectrum analyzer up. I have my synthesizer, I have my scope. And so what we can do and track in real time is sort of follow along what happens if say I'm like adding in FM. In this case, I'm you know using that same carrier to also act as a modulator here. And so as I bring this up, we should start to see this turn more into a saw wave. And this is actually very interesting with the FM4, something I noticed fairly recently is that you get, when you really start to push this up high, like all sorts of like aliasing sort of artifacts, and you can then see how it shows those up in the oscilloscope, which is really cool. And obviously we can still take this one in. We can freeze it, move it around, etc., and it just works as like a great aid, especially for like FM synthesis or other forms where sometimes the result may be um, a little less expected, right, as compared to say like subtractive synthesis. Anyway, I just want to share that with you. I found that with the Smexoscope, you get kind of a much more obvious change to the waveform sometimes with the bitwig one it's so clean that when you're going from like that sign to that saw it doesn't always look like it's that big of a difference uh, whereas I found in this Mexiscope, you can really kind of see it. And I did just want to point out, though, that I think the Bitwig oscilloscope is really useful, especially because it can be used um, as like a stereo oscilloscope. And so if you have a stereo signal and you're really trying to show people, look, stereo is just the difference between left and right. You take a tool where you can kind of flatten it out to mono. You can watch and see how the, the waveform comes together. Um, that's something that I've done fairly recently. And, and I think it really helped to kind of explain that concept, which, we, you know, Stereo is a simple concept, but any kind of visual feedback is useful. And then the other thing with the Bitwig um, displays that I think is great is with like the Dynamics device when you have like a drum loop or something or a vocal that's very much uh, varied amplitude wise, you can really then see what it is you're compressing. And I found that to be really useful. But just wanted to share with you guys that the Smexoscope is now 64 bit, that it will now work in Bitwig Studio. And I think more than anything else, this is just kind of uh, a funny throwback to some Thing that I complained about so much when I was making the course and trying to explain synthesis concepts. And now look at that. It 
works inside of Bitwig Studio, so I have nothing more to complain about. Uh, life is all good, and hopefully if you are an instructor and you're using Bitwig Studio, um, this is just kind of an FYI for you that this will work, and uh, to maybe throw it in there if you your students or even you are not liking the kind of two devices left to right. That's why it's really nice to kind of pop it up because you can then say, all right, this is the synthesizer. These are our visual displays and uh, so forth. So nothing really interesting in this video. Just wanted to share with you guys something that I discovered and wasn't aware about. So uh, for some of you who maybe are really comfortable and familiar with this oscilloscope, uh, it will now work inside of Bitwig Studio and is obviously 100% free to download.